Hey everyone, Nate here. Today I'll be going over Cinema 4D basics and rendering for Roblox GFX. I want to go over this thoroughly, so I'm starting off in Roblox Studio, showing you all of my tips and tools that I use. I use the plugin um, Character Importer by Already Pro. It allows you to import your characters just based off your uh, username. Also, you can use Load Catalog just in case you want to create your own character. First, I'm going to go into uh, the plugin management. I'm just going to show you all uh, the specifics of the plugins I use. It's Load Catalog, Load Character, and finally, uh, Wear Hat. These are the free ones I recommend for GFX. Wear Hat basically allows you to drag on your hats onto the character model, and it'll automatically position it for you. First, I'm going to show off the load character plugin. Uh, you can insert any username and it'll load their character and place it into the studio for you. I'm going to use the character GRE to demonstrate because for custom characters, I recommend you use this character because the person with the username GRE doesn't have any hats on but has the template for shirts and pants on. Uh, make sure you spawn at origin and make sure you spawn as R6 and not R15. Now the reason why you want to spawn at origin is because when you import it uh, to Cinema 4D, it will be placed in the center of the Cinema 4D workspace. Also, for R15 textures, they won't quite work on the rigs we're going to be using. Yeah, but we'll get to that later, so right now I'm just showing off. The fact that you could just put in your shirts and pants inside this Gree character. I just called it Gree because why not? Uh, here I'm just going to show off the other two plugins uh, by importing the Ultimate Victory Hat using the low catalog and I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to just drag it in. And you could see that it automatically snapped in and because it's all thanks to this plugin by Aussie Pig that we have here this makes it easier for us to make uh, custom characters uh, if you want a hat from the catalog or a custom hat that you can find inside the marketplace uh, you know whatever but for this video I'm going to be using my own character to demonstrate since that I feel like uh, it would be easier for you just to understand just using my own character all that stuff Alright, now that we have our character imported, well, me, of course, I'm gonna just go look for it. You can keep your face if you want. If you're doing anime, you could, like, just delete the face if you don't like it, if that's really you. Uh, but some, like, animation rigs, if you want, like, a face rig, just delete the face. But I'm just gonna keep it for this tutorial. You wanna right-click your model and then uh, just click Export Selection, and it'll export it as an OBJ file. If you're planning on sticking with uh, Roblox GFX in the future, I highly recommend that you have a folder that sorts out everything, including your renders, Roblox OBJs, and everything you need to help you. So basically, in my Roblox OBJs folder, as you can see here, just going into my folder, I'm just going to export it as um, fightinggear.obj, and it's going to export the textures as well, so don't worry about that. So now they're exported, you can go into either Blender or Cinema 4D, but I'm going to be using Cinema 4D for this video. Once you boot up Cinema 4D, it should look like this. You want to go into Merge and you want to find your OBJ. When you import, you should see some uh, import settings. Uh, just follow what I have here. If you're like me and you have a uh, weird importing where you can't even see it when you import, just follow me. All the Cinema 40 bugs are different, but this is mine, so if you can just pay attention closely, um, you can't even see it because the Roblox model is too small. So basically what I did was I basically just start to scale up in the bottom right. You can see for me the model is kind of inverted, so all you gotta do is put a negative value to the X value. You can also see for the fix for this uh, small bug also has caused the textures to be transparent. You can just fix it by unchecking a few of the boxes as you can see here. 
All right, so now that you have your models imported, it's time to import the textures. First, I'm going to import the textures for the hairs. You just find your hair model after clicking the three dots in the bubble right there. So since we have a rig, we only want the hair models to be attached to the rig. So basically, since we have two hats, the bottom two are our hats, the rest are body parts. Go ahead and take the parts that aren't the hats and you can just go delete it. Uh, now just expand the rig and find your attachments and find the head. Now you can just drag it into your attachments, just like so, and it will be attached to your controller, just like that. This allows for the hats to move along with the head when we're posing. Right here, I'm going to take the rig texture and I'm going to replace it with the texture that we exported in the same way we did with the hats. And there we go, we have our fully rigged character, right here. Woohoo! Yeah, we can do all sorts of stuff now. If you just move the character controller around, you can see that those little parts around it are to control the characters. You can do like a little wave, I'm doing it to demonstrate. Now I'm gonna do a quick pose to show off uh, what you can do with posing. Another thing I forgot to mention is that if you look here, I have leg stretch and all ankles, all that stuff. You can just disable that by going to any like rigs and you can just click the base and it'll open up the rig settings and you can just turn those off. So now I'm just gonna go for a pose just to demonstrate for the render. I'm going to go for a sort of running pose Usually I see people not going for such dynamic poses for some reason. I feel like people should really start to aim for like more expressive poses rather than just a wave. Your poses really show off the character of the person so you're gonna want to focus as much as possible on the poses and uh, on your camera angles and all that stuff. Now you can see I'm starting to go for a Naruto run because I just couldn't think of a better pose in the moment, so let's just go for a Naruto run. A tip for posing I would have is that you basically have a quote-unquote line of action. I guess I'll have a video in the description for that. Um, it will explain everything you need to know about poses and all that stuff. It was a cool video I found uh, when I started out GFX. It's not related to Roblox, but it really helps. So you can see I finished a pose right here. You just want to go to merge and you want to find your favorite Lightroom inside your computer. Uh, a Lightroom is basically, it helps up to uh, light up your character so that it's all equal and doesn't look like it just came out of a dark, dark shadowy alley cave, I don't know. But um, my favorite is Onigui's Lightroom. It's pretty much free, I can like, I don't know, it's in the dojo, you can just go get it. Um, my dojo is in the description. But I'm just gonna turn around it to uh, face the front. So then you have my character facing the front, doing an Naruto run, yada yada yada. Pressed render at the top just to show you what it is with the Lightroom. But we're not quite done, so you can just see that it's not quite good. Uh, well, not up to my standard, at least. So what you wanna do is you wanna open up the render settings, which is that action thing with the gear. Click effect, add ambient occlusion, and global illumination. Now this rendering won't save to the file yet, but I'm just testing it out here. You can see it takes a bit longer, but it turns out more high quality. There is more tones and it doesn't reflect as much. Now to finalize it, you just want to go to output and you want to set your uh, dimensions, like how big you want the image to be. So I'm just going to put it as thumbnail size, which is 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to put the resolution as 100. You can put it whatever you want, but don't put it too high. Here you can see I'm in the saving tab of the render settings, and I click the dot 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 to find the location where I want to save my file, as well as choosing the name I want to save it as.
You probably want the render to be transparent, so just check out Alpha Channel and make sure that your image is PNG. I'm just gonna finalize up the camera uh, angle and I'm going to start rendering it. After you have the camera angle you want, you want to press render to picture view and this allows you to save the file. After you're done rendering, it should pop up in the picture viewer. The file location should be where you set it in the render settings. After all that, I'm done for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. My name's Nate, and I'll see you next time.